Hello and welcome to the NBS show episode number 515. I'm your host Norman Sanzo and today we got some news for you this week. So let's hop right into it. So first up is Party Maestro revealed for My Little Pony role-playing game core rulebook. Uh, following the Pegasus race reveal from uh, from back on the 24th, we have a new page this week starring the, pi- uh, starring the party maestro in the new Koru book. For the My Little Pony RPG, you can't have a horse game without <laughs> a horse bard. Alright, so let's, let's take a look see what's what this is so the party maestro um it shows vinyl makes sense um but oh pinky would be uh, there too but let's see you can start a party anywhere anytime and with anyone usually it lifts the spirits of your group and improves morale to no end but you have a tendency to get overexcited, and it can start to get very wearing. Uh, influence, skill, persuasion. <clears throat> uh, example of uh, example pony, cheese sandwich, incredibly uh, excitably uh, excitable and outgoing. Cheese sandwich is never shy about firing off a party cannon or throwing a rubber chicken into the mix. Perks, uh, perks, party power. You have an amount magical ability to get a party started with a loud and exciting signature move. It may be firing a confetti cannon for from nowhere, conjuring a few crate of bubbly fizzy drinks, spontaneously covering an area in decorations, or even getting everyone in the area dancing you can use this ability three times a day and when you do uh, not only does the party begin but the group gains a friendship point okay that's something new hang-ups fun exhaustion too much noise and excitement can get very wearing once you have used your party power perks in the day any subsequent use uh, use uh, annoys everyone you still gain the friendship point but you cannot assist or be assisted by anyone else for the rest of the scene slash encounter suggested characteristics party characters are social characters however all that effect Stiffness can become grading if they don't know when to take it down a notch. It is important to note that they can only start a party, not force it on anyone. People might start dancing, but they can stop as soon as they like. Okay, uh, let's see what the bonds. Uh, I just want everyone to have fun. Life is better when it's loud. I love a party, but no one else seems to want them. I wish someone would throw a party for me one day. The best thing about parties is meeting new people. It's not a party without games and challenges. A party can happen at any time, so it must be. uh, So I must be always ready. Uh, It's not a real party unless my friends are there. uh, There, a party is great way to avoid thinking about things that upset you Mm, okay interesting uh i like to make every party memorable in some way everyone loves a good party even when they say they don't Uh, no one throws a a better party than me okay um let's break it down so one of the few things that I noticed about the Party Maestro, um, what was it again? Party Maestro, um, 
character background i i think it could be a class i i'm not sure but about uh party maestro is um they seem to be the distraction the buff and nerf probably because um what i'm reading here is that it says you can start a party anywhere anytime unless uh, usually uh, it lifts the spirit so um from what i can tell this character here uh, tends to use a lot of aoe abilities to boost up the party's morale and give them some friendship points and i i don't know what those are um the perk is party power so uh, you have an almost magical ability to get a party started with a lot and exciting signature move so basically uh you describe to your gm what your party power is going to be uh, for example, if you're like uh, Pinkie Pie, um, you pop up, you pop off nowhere, blast a party cannon, and decorate the whole area with balloons, confettis, food and drinks, and some party games, and with incredible music. And uh, everyone in your party will get an advantage like that. You can use it. Uh, Yep, uh, your your group gains a friendship point and whatnot, but if you you, you can't use it too much because, um, after the second and third time, you kind of get a negative buff on your, uh, self or negative debuff, where you can't get, uh, help or you can't get assisted by your teammates and you cannot assist your teammates. So it's a what it's one of those things where you have to kind of weigh in the pros and cons. So the first time is always a good thing, but do you want to use it now or use it later? Because the other two times, those can be a bad situation where yeah, you can do the uh what you call this? Uh party power, but then you can't really help or get help from others. So um, that means if your character is, let's just say, trying to open a door. Um, an example for D&D is when your character wants to do something, uh, let's just say open a door, uh, they can do certain checks. Uh, in this example, they want to kind of lockpick the door. So what they roll is uh, they are D20 plus the, what you call this, uh, side of hand uh, bonus or side of hand uh, modifier. Uh, that could be a plus two or plus one or a minus one or nothing, zero. So you just roll D20 plus your uh, side of hand modifier and that's the result that if you do it normally. Uh, but if you have a friend helping you, uh, that means you roll at advantage. That means you roll two d twenties and pick the highest. So, in this scenario here, um, let's just say you use your party power twice. So you can't help a friend, and a friend can't help you. Uh, that's kind of sucks because let's just say your kind of party maestro here is the quote unquote best pony to lock pick a door. But your party maestro here would benefit well if somebody is helping them trying to open the door, like in the D and D scenario there. But because of the party, ex uh, sorry, fun exhaustion, your character doesn't get the help, and it just based on the roll of the die, just the ones. So if they suck. They suck, but well, that's the end. <laughs> well, that's a tabletop role playing game in a nutshell. So it's a balance of what do I do? Do I do this now or do I do this later? Uh, does this scenario calls for it? Uh, example: Yesterday I was playing a bit of D and D, and I had my character who was a barbarian <clears throat> fighting a storm boar. Uh, his life point were down to twenty two. And one of the things was, 
if my character were to swing on the boar and it hits, I'll get um, a, a crackback or I, I'll get damage for attacking it because of its storm hide. So that's what the pros and cons that I had to weigh in because since I'm the tank taking all the brunt of the damage, I had to go in and try and uh, make sure my squishy don't get hurt. And my squishies re need to realize that I have, I am their protector and they kind of need to uh, heal me in any shape or form that they can because if I'm gone, that means they're going to be the next target. So in this scenario here with um, ponies, they need to make sure that, yes, uh, your character Pike Maestro here is going to be the person that locks pick the door, whatever it is going to do. They, they need to balance out the thing. So if they're going to throw a party, that means uh, the other two parties really need to be warranted and justified because from that point on, without a long rest, you're going to be kind of a hindrance to the group if your role is not that important at the current situation. But that's a different story. So, um, suggested so characteristics and <clears throat> party characters are social characters. However, all that efficiency, uh, effectiveness can be grading. And this is what I was talking about with the character style. So, um, yeah, you can build your character to be just imagine, just imagine Pinkie Pie <laughs> loud exciting fun but at the same time too can be grading because sometimes you, you just want to have a calm and quiet moment to just hang out with friends just to have a quiet day and whatnot uh, have tea read books and whatnot also comment on stuff you know like kind of those adult style parties where i'm tired and i don't really want to be bombarded by EDMs, but uh, we also get a few uh, background bonds. Uh, this is, I'm guessing, how you quote-unquote portray your character, what are their motivations, why do they do stuff, and uh, I, 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 I mentioned something that um, I find very fascinating, and that was... Uh, a party can happen uh, uh, party uh, I think what ah yes uh, I love party but no one else seems to want them that could be a very interesting uh, view or interesting uh, background bond uh, this one uh, I like to make every party memorable in some way that's also a fun thing too I mean it's based on how you want to portray your character. Uh, this is just a quote-unquote uh, guide for you to play your, play your characters. Uh, so, uh, what was this? Um, so, you could uh, use this one. Every love, everybody, sorry, everyone loves a good party, even when they say they don't. So, uh, you can play this on your first party power, um, get everybody in the mood, dancing, partying and whatnot. Technically, you'll be the distraction and you go to the captain of the BBEG, big bad evil guy, uh, and says, oh, this, this is fun, you, you do the dance and whatnot. So you kind of uh, try persuading them to dance and whatnot and make a conga line. Pro probably you can do that. If you, if you're high, if you roll high enough, it, it can work. And uh, But also remember that uh, people might start dancing, but they can stop as soon as they like. So that's uh, kind of the cons for this. And uh, I think like the persuasion, uh, influence skill persuasion is kind of a must for your character. Uh, you really need them to kind of be high. So I'm guessing there's a charisma score for um, the characters. Usually 20 is godlike. And yeah, 20 is godlike. Uh, if there's 
if, if they're using any bonuses like uh, pluses, uh, they can reach beyond 20. But um, some games state that, nah, 20 is the max. You, you can go any higher. So yeah, uh, this character will be very fascinating to see in the long run. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the next news. Hasbro released Limited Edition 3, G3, My Little Pony Pride t-shirt and canvas tote. Uh, to celebrate Pride Month, Hasbro has released a set of limited edition My Little Pony Transformers and Furby shirts and canvas tote bags with multiple color options for each product. 20% of the proceed price of each product goes towards Youth Pride Incorporated, a non-profit located in Hasbro's native Rhode Island. The My Little Pony design that uh, they're using features the G3 Ponies, Skywish, and Star uh, Catcher. Uh, the text from Hasbro's announcement on Twitter and Facebook uh, is reproduced below. We take pride in creating space and uh, spaces and stories for er mm, I, okay. I think that's spaces and sorry for everyone by everyone. For those looking to support the LGBTQ plus community, you can buy an exclusive t-shirt or tote bag featuring some of your favorite Hasbro characters with $6 for every shirt and $4 for every tote bag, benefiting Youth Pride Rhode Island. Uh, these items are available for a limited time, so get yours today. Store dot blah blah blah. Alright, um, let's take a look see. Um, I um, I don't know. Uh, G three is not one of my favorite generations. I I haven't. I I totally don't know anything about three G. So let's look at things I do know, and those are Transformers. <clears throat> so we have Furbies. Um, we have Optimus Prime's head, like that. Um. How oh, hard about this? Um, I I guess it's okay. It's nothing special, really. Uh, if if you want to support the uh, what you call this? Um, the association, not association, the uh, non-profit. You can do so. You can click on the store and buy it if you want to. Um, honestly, if I were to pick one, I'll probably pick this one. Uh, the Optimus, uh, um, the Optimus Prime, head tote, uh, canvas tote bag. It looks nice. Um, the colors match really well with black, and technically everything matches well with black. So yeah, that's where I'll put my money in if I were to buy something from the store. So let's move on to the next news. Next news is more IDW and the summer connecting covers by Jack Lawrence revealed. The remaining two covers for IDW's and the Summer One Shot comic are now available. Following the reveal of the My Little Pony and Sonic Connections uh, cover earlier this month, the two new covers featuring the Turtles and Dungeons and Dragons slot in uh, left and right of the My Little Pony cover. All four connecting covers were illustrated by IDW artist Jack Lawrence, who was illustrating the interior of the Dungeons and Dragons and the Summer Comic. So let's see. Um, I think this sounds good example to start. Let's see. Ooh, oh, that's huge. Um, so we see the turtles having their uh, beach fun thing, connecting with the ponies, uh, and then Summer D and D, and then Sonic, and we we see uh. The what is it? okay, uh, oh, mm, uh, let's see if I can scroll here. Uh, so we see Sonic coming in with some dust clouds here, uh, going through the turtles, then the ponies, then to Dungeons and Dragons, and so on. Uh, yeah, th this looks this looks good. I got nothing bad to say um the connecting cover looks awesome oh no sorry the connecting cover looks awesome 
And uh, to one one thing that is a bit um how do you put this? One thing about the comic that is a downer is that it's not a huge crossover, uh, in world crossover, whatever whatever it is. It's just a uh one shot independent story. It's just the cover. So yeah, I mean it, it's all good, I guess. And we get to see. Well, we got no idea. Um, what this? What is the story going to be about and whatnot? Like we, I guess we have to, uh, go check it out ourselves. Uh, I know I would, I will when the pony issue comes out. So yeah, that's what I'll be doing. Um, yeah. Uh, I guess this is one of those cross promotion for people who are into all of this. I'm not sure. Uh, I, since it's a one shot, I guess this is a good place to start. So anyway, let's move on to the next news. <clears throat> IDW publish I don't know, IDW publishing to release series based on My Little Pony Tell Your Tale. Apparently, an article in the June twenty twenty three edition of the magazine Licensing World apparently to claim that IDW publishing, the company that produced the official My Little Pony comic, will soon be releasing a new series based on uh, the My Little Pony Tell Your Tale. Oh boy. <clears throat> Celebrating its 40th anniversary uh, this year, My Little Pony has dropped brand new content and opened uh, immerse, um, immersive LBE local based entertainment, location based entertainment attraction including the co-branded Transformers and My Little Pony play launch IDW continues its 11 year run of My Little Pony comic based on the new Netflix animated series making uh, make your mark and we'll soon release a new program based on the YouTube series tell your tale since launching in 1983 my little pony has captured itself mm. uh, this is a bit too odd since riley farmer the editor of the g5 my little pony comics has previously stated that there are no new my little pony comic series to be announced this year which would seem to be contradictory to uh, contradicting uh, contradicted the soon part the use of the word programming is also kind of weird but that's how they wrote it and it's all we have to go off now go off off at the moment so um, this is interesting so based on um Riley Farmer, who was the editor for G5 Comic, he says, no, there's no new pony comics coming in besides whatever we've planned. Uh, this is kind of something new that is unplanned. So this is one of those things where I'm guessing if I would be bold enough to make an assumption or guess is that this is going to be one of those... Um, comics or uh yeah i'm gonna guess that this is going to be one of those comics where it's just a screen cap of the youtube series with text overlay and just basically put into comic form and published by idw technically nothing new is made by the crew it's just screenshots and uh speech bubbles being created which kind of makes sense if you're kind if you're trying to um uh, comic uh to create a comic version of the things that are available on the youtubes makes things a bit i won't say easy or interesting i mean it just makes things convenient for people who don't want to watch it but also how is this going to be released? What's the quality going to be like? And why would I buy something that is already free online? You know what I mean? So, uh, if it's that, then 
I, I guess it's okay. I don't know. I mean, I'm not. I should whatever. So yeah. Um, if that's the case, that'll be very fascinating and interesting to see. Last news on the week or for the week is a giant pile of Trixie plush incoming from Symbiote Studios. Back in March, we had the reveal of both Lyra and Trixie plush from Symbiote Studios. These guys are coming in with some super high quality ones. If you miss their main six offerings over the past few years, today they tease the giant pile of Trixie and uh, on their Twitter page, apparently she's on the way. The uh, the others are still, uh, sorry, the others are all $30 a pop. So I'm guessing we will see the same price for the Grand Powerful one. Uh, we will get a post up once she's actually, all right, cool, cool. Mm, yeah, uh, from what I'm seeing here, the plush quality is pretty cool and they look good. And for 30 bucks, I guess it's a steal, but I'm not 100% sure. Mm, if you remember way back in the days, Pony Plush has been pretty expensive, uh, especially when it comes to uh, uh, plush. You, you got your low quality Hasbro license plush or even has room made plush where the main is just like ribbons and whatnot. And then you got your mid-tier plush from third-party sellers that do make good quality plush. You got your uh, low low to mid-tier, yeah, that's low to mid-tier. And then you got your mid to high-tier where uh, you get companies like uh, this one. Um, This was 4DE, yeah. And this was about twenty four ninety five dollars, uh, and this was created in. Um, do I see a date here? Oh boy, my eyes! I think this is what two thousand twenty thirteen. Yeah, twenty thirteen. So this was in twenty thirteen with the price tag of twenty five dollars. So that's kind of cool. And oh my, they have the old hub logo. Uh, sorry, anyway, um, so you you have that from Fro D E. Uh, I'll consider that to mid to high. And this one, uh, from Symbiote Studios, I'll consider it uh, mid to high too. And then you got your insanely expensive plush by custom plush builders that are considered to be very expensive where you can technically buy 10 of twilight there that i just put or 10 of this so yeah um those those can be expensive but they look stupid good so yeah um something buying something like this for 30 bucks i say yeah I, i'll probably get fluttershy i i don't really have a fluttershy Plush with me, uh, something back there. That's not a plush. That's just a cushion, a pony shaped cushion. So let's um move on to the next topic. So next topic is what have I been doing my week? So this week has been really busy, really really busy. Uh, had a lot of work to do. Went to a wedding. And oh, uh, weddings are interesting, um, especially ones that I'm not. How how do I put this? Um, I don't go to weddings a lot, and even if I do go to weddings, it's usually the Malay, um, the Malaysian or uh, the Malay, um, weddings where you usually come at around certain time. You go grab your food interact with friends slash uh, members of the bride and groom say your hellos and then like you just get out and you don't really interact with the bride and groom at all because the bride and groom comes at a certain time 
because they are setting up for whatever they're doing and then they come in and uh, do their walks and whatnot. Do, do, it's, a, it's a kind of a parade and show themselves off to everyone. Then they have the meals and then like take pictures with the people who are still around. Um, I went to a Chinese wedding. Uh, the Chinese wedding was a bit grand. Um, this, this is what you can expect from Chinese weddings. Uh, you they usually rent out a banquet hall from a restaurant, and uh, they have their food served in courses. I I think um, American weddings are almost the same, where you have your starters, main, and dessert. But it depends on how many mains you have, like your first main, second main, third main, so on, blah blah blah. And uh, my table was. Not privy to that because uh, I was eating with people who, let's just say, uh, they they wanted to have uh, halal food. So um, the, the table was really grand because the food was just like, oh my god, um, one lump sum that came in, we just ate that and there's no courses. So uh, by the time uh, the event kind of Go went on and on. The food got cold, and <laughs> let's just say that it was great at the start. But as time goes on, the food was cold. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, the environment, the setting, uh, it was pretty fun. Like I've went to, I think, just this. This would be my second Chinese wedding, and it was all. It was amazing. It was amazing. Uh, the bride and groom came to our table, we toast them and so on. It was really, it was really fun. It was really fun. Um, other than the wedding, I uh, play d and I, I told you the story of my barbarian character, so yay, that's about it. Other than that, um, nothing much. Didn't play magic because wedding. Ne needed to buy this shirt specifically. And I, I, I feel like this it was a good investment. It was on discount. <laughs> so yeah, um, I, I have a nice shirt to go out and do stuff with. And I can, I can wear a t-shirt beneath it. And I look young. <laughs> God damn it. So anyway, yeah, I, I guess that's about it. So let's wrap things up. Yeah, let's, let's wrap things up, please. So if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbshowgmail.com. Uh, you can also reach us on the Twitter, the show's Twitter account is at the NBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Uh, also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date, and also uh, Stitch Radio, and also like our Facebook page, and you can catch us on Pennyvive.com. Links will be in the show notes. Also, if you don't mind, do subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitch Radio. Over there, you can catch me, Silver Quill, uh, Terra, Jacob, Reviewing the Pony episodes, comics, specials, movies. And if there's a game, I'll guess I'll do that. Uh, sometimes we like to do other things than ponies. And those can be cartoons, animes, comics, mangas, movies. Uh, TV specials, if anything interests us, and video games. So, yeah, uh, we, we like to do that too. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Jacob, Lucky Knight, and also my stuff like, thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll guys, and I'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode of the BS Show. See ya.